years ago, Ruger came out with the LCP. This thing was supposed to be the be-all, end-all for concealed carry firearms in a 380 caliber pistol. My preference, because the trigger was so bad, was to take them and just get rid of every single one of them. Just get rid of them. I mean, they, in my humble opinion, it was one of the worst triggers. The Smith & Wesson bodyguard was probably right up there with it, but it was one of the worst triggers on a concealed carry firearm. I get it. A concealed carry firearm is supposed to have a really uh, safe trigger, if you will, uh, with a lot of trigger pull, a lot of take up. Again, if you're drawing it and using it for concealed carry, yes, you don't want a hair trigger. It was bad. Anybody that shot one knows exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, anybody from Ruger who ever shot an LCP definitely knows what exactly what I'm talking about because the LCP 2 that they just came out with, not only was the body redesigned, but thank Jesus in heaven, they redesigned the trigger as well. We're going to take a really close look at this pistol today, and I'm going to tell you something. I won't be tossing this one in a pond. Let's take a look. The Ruger LCP was a concealed carry firearm that was begging to be redesigned from the moment it was originally released in 2008. While I never cared for the looks, looks are not everything, especially in a firearm. You want it to function and do what you need it to do. So I bought one anyway. Big mistake. The trigger was complete and total garbage. I don't care about all the arguments about a concealed carry firearm having to have a very long trigger. This trigger was junk. I sold the pistol, didn't have any use for it, couldn't get used to it, couldn't ever warm up to it. So I never even had a chance to hate on the low sights that everybody else complained about. I also never had a chance to hate on the fact that the slide didn't lock open whenever the magazine was empty. Okay, my apologies for beating that dead horse. Now let's talk about all the cool things the LCP2 did to address all the issues with the original LCP. Now it's obvious that the LCP2 borrows its looks from its bigger brother, the Ruger American in 45 caliber. But where it's most noticeable is in the grip area. Even the lines on the grip look very, very similar from the Ruger American to the Ruger LCP2. You'll also notice that one of the differences is that the trigger guard is very much more squared off on the LCP2 versus the original LCP where it's somewhat rounded. And not only are the serrations on the two a deeper and wider cut to allow for better charging of the slide, but there's also front serrations that the LCP original did not have. And if you had an issue with the original sights on the LCP that they were too low and too small, you'll enjoy the little bit higher sights on the LCP2. They do protrude a little bit higher, but I'm actually a big fan of lower profile, more concealed sights on a concealable handgun. And I don't have a problem with the old LCP sights because in my opinion, whenever you're in a stressful situation and you're going to use a concealed carry firearm, you're probably not focusing so much on the sights that you become picky at that point. Now there are a couple of places that material was added. You'll notice the taper is taken away at the front end of the old LCP where material was added. And you'll also notice that the grip was widened a little bit on the LCP2 versus the original LCP. In essence, what Ruger has done here is added a slight bit of weight, but they were willing to give up that weight for the advantages that they gained by adding that material and the improvements on the firearm. One thing I noticed for a guy like me that has a little bit larger hands is that in the old LCP, and I'm surely not trying to beat this thing to death, you already know what I think of it, but the old LCP had that slanted front end, all the front end kind of tapered down in the front, towards the front and underneath. For my support hand, when I put it out front, I didn't have much of a purchase out there. I, I wasn't able to get much on the actual firearm. This LCP2, on the other hand, it actually, they, they lengthen uh, the material that comes down here, but also going forward. It doesn't taper going up like that towards the actual muzzle. It stays flat and straight down here, but also comes down a little further. So that now when I try to get my support hand out front, I have plenty of room right here to rest my support thumb to keep the front end of that muzzle steady and get a little bit better shot. Obviously it's a 380, so not a lot of control issues there, but you can always uh, use a little bit more control on any kind of a caliber. Now to my favorite, and I feel like most significant improvement on the LCP, the trigger. The trigger on the old LCP was a double action trigger. That meant that with a single pull of the trigger coming backwards, you were actually cocking the hammer and then firing the pistol, all with a motion of one trigger pull going backwards. The new LCP2 is actually a single action trigger. What that means is whenever you charge that slide, you are cocking the hammer backwards. Now when you shoot the gun, every single time you pull that trigger, all you're doing is sending that hammer forward. When the gun fires, it's actually sending that hammer backwards and cocking it for you. So you're not actually having to do both motions of cocking and firing 
with the single pull of a trigger, you're only doing the firing motion. The actual firing of the firearm with the slide going rearward, that's what's cocking it for you. Whoa. And the trigger reset is that's a surprising. fraction of what it used to be. Wow, the reset is incredible. Very short reset. It's, it's probably a third. Yeah. At least no more than half, but probably a third of what the LCP was, the original LCP. Very impressive trigger. That's an impressive trigger. Yeah, I like it. Take a closer look at the reset of these two pistols. Notice how far forward you have to go to reset the trigger after firing it on the original LCP. Now, notice how short the reset is. You don't go near as far forward on the LCP-2 after you fired the firearm in order to reset the trigger to pull it again. Now I have to admit, there is one thing that I like about the old Ruger LCP. The very fact that their magazines from the old LCP will work in the LCP too. So before you throw this thing in the drink like I did, grab your mag out of there because it's going to work in this bad boy. Now just like a larger gun is hard for a person to control with smaller hands, sometimes a smaller gun is a little tough for a person with larger hands to control. I found that the different types of stippling and grip that you see, the differences between these two pistols, you can tell that the two has much more grip, surface area, but also the textured grip is a whole lot better and it allows for somebody like me that has a little bit larger hands for this particular gun to get a nicer, firmer grip on the handgun while I'm firing it. The increase in the grip width also aids in this. Of course, a 380 is no match for a 200 pound guy, so we let Alexis take a shot at the pistol. As you can see, she has no trouble containing the pistol and controlling recoil. The pistol is also shipped with a very nice concealable soft holster that you can easily put into your front pocket and draw from. Guys, I gotta give Ruger some credit. These guys recognized the problems and flaws that they had in their old firearm and they remedied them. You gotta give them credit on that. Not a lot of firearm manufacturers out there will do that. When they have a firearm that was selling like that LCP was selling like hotcakes, there wasn't much reason to fix anything. They saw it, they recognized it, they fixed it. They put out a much better product. In fact, they went beyond what I expected them to do. They improved this trigger from the point that I just needed a little bit of improvement to make it an acceptable trigger. They put this thing into actually making it a good trigger on a concealed carry firearm. Kudos to Ruger. Uh, anytime I'm throwing jogging pants on or shorts or something like that and don't want to wear a holster, I'm going to be throwing this in my pocket. Very impressed with this redesign and this LCP2. You've got to check it out. If you get a chance, go to a range and check it out. I got mine at Gator Guns in Sulphur, Louisiana. Check them out. They're worth taking a peek at. Um, if you were really burnt and definitely turned off on the last LCP, please don't judge this one on the last one. This thing is worth the money.